Hi everybody, it is January 10, 2018 now. It is 12.51 a.m. on the East Coast. Forecasters, another major winter storm to pound the East Coast. Tropical moisture feed ahead of developing major winter storm will provide huge rainfall atop any frozen ground in the middle Atlantic and Northeast into Saturday. Bad, bad in this case, may equate to blizzard-like conditions with heavy rain over frozen ground and snow. Making for a real mess, just look at the amount of precipitable water. Wow. So, I don't know why I get these pop-ups. Um, it doesn't look good. Get ready for another storm to hit the East Coast. Stuck up. Now, on food, water, gas, oil, fuel to heat your homes. It's going to be coming in Friday night to Saturday morning. Lots of freezing rain. Snow will follow behind the liquid precipitation as cold air advex in between the front and low. This means a layered mess is likely with frozen ground, then rain on that, which will refreeze, then snow on top of that. It's a layer cake from hell, frozen over. Avoid evening rush hour, Friday. What else do we have? Rain triggering deadly mudslides tonight in California. Mud and debris rushing down hills on the major highway, shutting down the 101 in Montecito. Multi-car accidents on rain slick roads. This truck losing control off an interchange to the I-5 freeway. Powerful torrents of rain and mud ripping up trees and homes, trapping people inside. In fact, a 14-year-old girl pulled from the mud and the wreckage alive. But not everyone has been saved, and the death toll is growing. ABC's Matt Duffin leads us off from California. Tonight, rescuers are trudging through chest high mud in the frantic search for the missing. We have multiple reports of uh, people trapped. Up to five inches of rain surging through creek beds with titanic force. Star Wars fear coming, coming to life for us right now. And our people are out there trying to do the best work they can and perform as many rescues as they possibly can. The Thomas Fire, the largest in California history, denuded the nearby hills of vegetation and anything that would absorb the water. Overnight, the famed 101 freeway overrun. We're retreating here, and you can actually feel debris hitting a car right now. Closed for 30 miles in both directions. And you can see how fast that water is moving here. I mean, that is a torrent of water. At least eight killed and over two dozen injured. Rescuers piling in overnight, gingerly pulling out this 14-year-old girl, so mud spattered, it's hard to make her out. Dogs were sent padding through the deep slop, skirting around eucalyptus trees that had snagged and sighted the cars and whole chunks of homes. Firefighters are telling us that that foundation right there, it had a house on it. That house is now over there, smashed up again. That crew on the rooftop searching for signs of life. Do you think someone is in there? We have a strong feeling someone's in that house. Some neighborhoods impassable, helicopters and High water vehicles taking families like Ben Hyatt's to safety. I immediately ran and woke up uh, Jack and pushed him to the top of the bunk bed. I was worried that it was just going to keep coming and coming. I uh, woke up my wife and we just did not know what to do. We were just surrounded by um, mud. The debris field was a miles long ribbon of mud, boulders, and the remains of people's homes. Above Burbank, look at all the water that came down through this dam, destroyed it looks like several vehicles and that RV there. That slide also causing a gas leak and bringing mandatory evacuations. And Matt Duffin reporting you tonight from Montecito. And Matt, we know just the devastating scene there. You've been reporting. So, it's uh, 13 dead. 13 killed. 13 murdered in Southern California with these mudslides. It's bad. Oprah even got it. Oprah's home affected by Southern California mudslides. So 
I guess uh, we should all really vote for Oprah to be the next president. That'll make her feel better. I can't believe the Oprah rah-rah going on in this country. It frightens me how dangerously stupid Americans have become. Yeah, Oprah. Let's let's just put Oprah in the White House now. And I think this is Oprah's video. That was a gas explosion. Apparently. So, this is what Oprah tweeted. What a day. Praying for our community again in Santa Barbara. Woke up to this blazing gas fire, then swipe left to see how deep the mud is in my backyard. Maybe swipe is a dog of hers. Helicopters rescuing my neighbors, looking for missing persons, 13 lives lost. I'll link below to everything. Incredible, though. The mud, the, the rocks, the debris flow came down out of the mountains where the fire was towards the beach. We're between the mountains and the ocean, overflowing Montecito Creek and destroying everything in its path. At least 13, that number likely to go higher. Let's take you up top from the air to see this devastation. The wider view from this morning. First responders, the sheriff described this as, quote, a World War I battlefield boulders, debris. They had to wade through knee-deep mud. Access to this area, difficult, extremely difficult. It was still heavy rain. It was three, four o'clock in the morning. Now, talk about rescues. Dozens were rescued from the air and from the ground. These dramatic pictures, a 14-year-old girl pulled out of a destroyed home after hours of county fire department. I heard that they responded at one point this morning alone, 600 calls for help came in. Now remember, this is not a mandatory evacuation area. That's higher up into the foothills where the Thomas fire burned. This was closer to the 101 voluntary evacuations. The conditions, as I mentioned, extremely difficult. For people who did survive this, it's something they'll, of course, never forget. Well, you know, it all started at like 3 in the morning. And, um, yeah, it, was really it all started at 3 in the morning. Again. The fires, when did they start? Like midnight, many people were awoken at 3 a.m. from the fires, and this now, 3 a.m. It was scary. Uh, we have a video in the house. It was very frightening because on the top, you couldn't, you couldn't see anything for hours. It was so dark outside. And, uh, finally light, like, we started seeing some um, help come. I think all of our friends, at least of the neighbors, started texting and calling the police and getting rescuers to us. So finally about 7, the phone rescuers, and they were going to make their way to our door, said, you need to get out now. The neighbor right across the street, uh, the mud and water came right through her wall, knocked her wall down, the mud came straight through. There's a lady staying at her house, and that lady got blocked on the other side of the living room. Um, the other neighbor then went over and saved her. So he and her other neighbor, at least three homes were destroyed, knocked off their foundation by mud and debris. That happened on the 300 block of Hot Springs Road. There was also a gas explosion in the area, and numerous residents are unaccounted for in Montecito. So I was sleeping right up here, right up the street, and um, about 4 a.m., started hearing a rumbling. Um, I couldn't tell if it was like a mountain coming down or water. I just had a, no idea. and. Uh, um, so we actually got our stuff and left because it just was so, like, you could feel the walls actually vibrating. I came to the gate and my wife was ankle deep in mud and our whole yard was on the mud. The cars were surrounded by mud and it is just coming down really heavily. Wow. Listen to those people. Now, these are images of ruined houses. As I mentioned at least four overturned trees, massive boulders. This was about an hour ago. We're on Hot Springs Road. Again, this is between the 101, the beach, and the Thomas Fire burn area, the community of Montecito. Very graphic, very raw. The water still running down the street here. 
Those who lived here, long gone. As we mentioned, the toll at 13, no IDs yet. That number may go higher. An undetermined number of people are still missing. The sheriffs, the fire department said their priority right now is to find out if any of those people that are unaccounted for are alive and need to be rescued or they're simply at other locations and haven't yet checked in with loved ones. But look at this. The water's still running down Hot Springs Road. There's... It's bad. I'll link below to these videos. There are so many videos now coming in. And you know what? They're all mainstream media. So I'd like to see more videos from people, you know, those people that have cameras on their phones and post on YouTube. It is getting kind of, uh, you know, so many in Houston. The Northern California fires, the Southern California fires. Not really seeing much posted by those people in these areas. So uh, if you know of any posts from just ordinary people, could you link them below this video? But it's, it's something, man. It's 13 dead, expecting more, the number to go higher. Jesus. Scott, definitely a devastating storm. From the moment that I got here, early in the morning at 2 a.m., all of until right now, nothing but destruction everywhere I go. This massive Debris, mudslide that has been going through from the top all the way to the bottom, making its way through all these neighborhoods, all the way down, even reaching to the highway. I mean, look at the destruction just right here. This is just one of the many cars that was washed up and destroyed. It's just into pieces, and I'm hoping that nobody was inside this. But many of these vehicles were washed up all the way from the top and brought down all the way. And it's not just cars. It's also homes. I saw many, many homes that were destroyed and just swifted down into the area. What we've been seeing today is nothing but destruction. And unfortunately, I had to see a couple bodies being taken out of the area and taken out. And it was something that you just don't think that would happen. Of course, this was something that was anticipated, a storm that we saw coming. But nobody could have imagined it was going to make the type of destruction it made. But you can see here, crews are still working trying to get this Highway 101 open. There's an awful lot of videos. So, guys, it's hard. You know, you heard that newscaster say that somebody described it as, as similar to, like, a war zone during World War One. Well, it is a war. Weather is being used as a weapon. And I certainly hope that I hear from subscribers who had survived the fires now wondering what's happening with their homes in Carpinteria. Um, also wondering about the Oroville Dam. This is all Southern California. What's going on in Northern California? Because comments are coming in from Northern California subscribers, they too getting a tremendous amount of rain in areas where the fires were. And one person left a comment about the Oroville Dam. The dam that they have been apparently uh, fixing, but leaks have been found. And yeah, I guess we Americans now just can't do anything right. No, this is deliberate destruction. And to ensure that we never, ever feel secure again.